In this video, I'm going to review the process of our RPG negotiation game, the role-playing game, which is totally online for our negotiations class at National Jungsin University. So to begin with, you can use any browser, but you do need to have a Google account. That's very important because all the documents are going to be on Google Drive. You can use Firefox and today I'm going to use Firefox in this demo just to show you that you can use a different browser. Although of course, as with all Google products, Chrome is guaranteed to work the best. Let's begin by logging into my Google account. In this case, I'm logging into my Google account as a teaching assistant. It could be a student. Uh, you just log in and, and you're ready to see your email. That's very normal. Let's begin the process. Let's say that it's Monday morning, 9 o'clock, time for class. My group should all be online together. We can see each other online when we all open this Group 1 document, if we're in Group 1. Again, if we're not Group 1, you cannot see Group 1's document. So I go ahead and I open up the Group 1 document. Up here you can see the title, Group 1, so I'm sure I'm in the right group. You should not be able to open the wrong group. If, there is a, if you can open somebody else's group, please tell me I've got to fix that. You can see in here that we have some details right at the very beginning. Up at the top, RPG 0 and Group Number 1. We also have a password here and a product name. So the product we're going to be using today is just a test. We're just playing a, a little game here. So it's a test product. Normally we would have the product name. Okay, if everything looks okay, I know I'm in the right sheet, so that's moving along quite well. Up in the top right area, you can see the login picture of other people who are logged into this document. So you can see this guy here, Clyde Warden, that's the professor, because I'm also logged in on Monday morning. I'm there. And then here is the TA who's logged in, and then all of your group mates will also appear here. We can communicate with each other because we can use the text box by just clicking there and go ahead and uh, send messages to each other. So I'm going to send a message from the teacher over to the student. So you would have seen a message from me, and it looks like that. Good morning. And I'll say... Is everyone here from your group? Because I would like everyone to participate. Now, does that mean you need to be together, physically together in the same room? No. You could be in your dorm room. Another person in your group could be at home. Another person could be at school on campus. It makes no difference. I just want to make sure that you're all logged into the same page. If you have five people in your group, it would be best five people are all logged in. I want everyone to participate and see what's happening. Of course, it's possible one person or two people can't make it, but it would be best if that's just rare and doesn't happen very often, or it's just one person. Remember, your group is going to earn a group grade. If you don't all work together, it's really tough. And this part in the morning is really key for everyone to be on the same page, to understand the same idea. Uh, we are ready. And what you need to do is go to the dice page. So you click that tab down at the bottom. We have a buyer, a seller, a dice, a marketplace, and a defaults tab. You need to click the dice tab. I will also, on the teacher side, see what you're doing. I can s see where you are. Monday morning, 9 a.m., when we're online, to get my attention and to ask any questions you have through the chat room. Of course, separately, you can come and make an appointment in my office anytime, or you can email the negotiation assistant, the teaching assistant's email at any time. But because this is the RPG beginning, maybe you have a question about the game or your situation in the game or some rules about the game. Now would be a good time to ask, but you have to be patient because we have many groups and I need to finish this first for everybody. So you may say something like, Professor Warden, I have a question. Can you... Can I wait for you? And I'll, I'll tell you, yes, in 30 minutes. Just stay online, and I'll get back to you. 
the most important part of the RPG is before you begin the game, you need to set up your company. And the way you do that is you go to your RPG page, which we can see here. Only you need to make sure you go to the tab labeled dice. You see that there? So you need to open up the dice section because we're going to be doing some dice rolling. You see the dice here, right? That kind of dice symbol. So we're going to be basically generating some random numbers and then you can make some choices about your company and what you want to buy or sell and what you want to emphasize in your negotiation. So let's take a look at this sheet here first and get some basic idea. You can see at the very top of the sheet is a very important area and that's this area here with the times in it. Time until start roll. So that means that how much time is left until you can actually roll the dice and generate the numbers you need to distribute. You can hear, see here this example 0017 minutes, meaning there's 17 minutes until I can begin. And very clearly, the page is showing me in this square, do not roll. So even if I try to roll, I can't roll now. That's impossible. You can also see that there is time until end, and that's 2 hours 17 minutes. So what this is telling me is that from the time of the beginning of the roll, which will be in 17 minutes, I'm going to have two hours more to complete the roll. That means I can sit with my group and we can make a plan, we can think what we want to do, and we have two hours until we need to lock everything in and begin to play the RPG. So that time may change depending on the RPG we are doing at the time, and we're going to do many of these through the semester, but usually what we do is it will be Monday mornings, usually Monday mornings, and it will usually begin at 9 a.m. And the time will usually go until 11 a.m. So you have that time, 9 and 11, two hours, to complete your role, make a plan, distribute your points, and then lock in and begin to play the game. And all the groups will be the same. So that's what that time up top is telling us. Right now I can't do anything because it's not time yet. There's 17 more minutes until time. And after that 17 minutes begins or is over and I, I have zero, it's going to allow me to roll and I'm going to have two hours after that. All right, that's the way that time functions. We also see, as I said, you cannot do anything now and that will not change until those 17 minutes pass, which now are down to 12 minutes here. Let's just quickly go over some parts of this page very quickly. The yellow area over here, these are going to be your points that you're going to play in the actual game. That is, when you play, these, ch these are the points, these are the system you're going to use, and they're unchangeable. They're going to be fixed for the whole time of the game. Usually, a game will last for six to seven days, depending on the schedule, but about a week. So you have a week, a five to seven days, to execute your negotiation and to use up all of your product or to buy all the product you need to buy. You can see down here we have an A and that A is a product because sometimes we have more than one product you can choose from. There might be an A product or a B product and depending on the one you choose it'll show the name. For example here sports carry duffel bag is product A. If I change that to product B then it will change to another product. Down in this green area, you can see these kind of drop down arrows and menus and these labels. These labels here are the same as the labels up top. So that is to say, if you look up here, see flex, you also have flex down here. If you see delivery, you also have delivery down here. These green area uh, numbers are changeable you can use the drop-down menu to go ahead and change them to be the values you want. And this is a way to distribute your points. Now you can see up here we have 19 points and we're supposed to spend 19 points down here in these drop-down arrows. So that's the way you distribute your points. Of course right now there's not much we can do because this game is already locked. We cannot roll, we cannot change anything even if we try. Let me go ahead and show you what would happen if we do try. So I can click anywhere on the page and press enter and we'll get a message like this. There was a problem, you're trying to edit, 
a protected seller object. So you cannot just change any area. There's only some areas you can change. For example, we can change the drop down menus here, but that's not going to really do anything because even though I change these numbers here, you can see the yellow numbers in the yellow area are not changing. Those are the actual game. We can't do anything. Why? Because we've still got 12 minutes until we're allowed to roll. You can see I, I went ahead and I distributed some points. I changed some of these points here and I actually ended up spending more points than I have. Right now I have 19 points and this red area will come up a warning saying you have spent more than you have. So that's something to pay attention to. But it doesn't really matter right now because nothing we can do. If I went ahead and I try to roll the dice now that says roll now, I can press the button and again it will say that uh, we're going to get a warning. But this warning is a little bit of a special warning. When you do play the game, the very first time you play, you're going to get this warning which is authorization required. This is a special case and it will happen to every everyone, everyone who has a Google page open the first time you begin to use the system. So that authorization required means at least one time you need to authorize because we have some scripts that run. So what you should do is go ahead and say continue. And then you're going to get a pop-up window. And that pop-up window is going to have your Google account on it. You may have more than one Google account, so you should select one that you want to use for our class. And then after you select your Google account, you're going to have to press this button allow. If you don't press allow, then the programs cannot run and you won't be able to play our game. So I'm going to go ahead and allow that now for this account. And that's it. That's I now have permission to go ahead and do things. But what can I actually do? Well, I can push the roll button, but what's going to happen? You can see that after I push the roll button, this yellow area here lights up and tells me type anything here. So you've probably seen this before because the program wants to check are you really a human? Are you just a robot or a bot? We really need to know that this is you. So after you press the button roll now, then this yellow area will light up and say type anything here. Well let me go ahead and type anything here. So I'm going to just go ahead and click that and type anything. 9988777 anything. Then press enter. So you must press enter. I go ahead and I press enter and the system will go ahead and run something. Well, it's not running anything now so I'm not going to get too excited. You need to be patient sometimes. The internet can be slow. Or there can be other problems. So I'm going to try that again. I'm going to press roll now. I'm asked to type anything. I'm going to click on anything and 98765 and press enter. And then you're going to get a message and the message says that it's contacted the server. So you go ahead and say, okay, I got it. It's contacted the server. Things are looking good. Ah, but there's a problem. The problem is it's not time to roll. So you need to check the class schedule, the message tells us. And you can see that the problem is we still have seven minutes until we can play this game, right? Uh, until we can roll. Now, after we roll, we play the game for a week, but right now we can't even roll. I can also press this button play now. What's that going to do? Something very similar. It's going to ask me to type anything here. So 9876223 something and then I press enter. And again, it's going to contact the server. And I say, okay, contact the server is good. And then it's going to say confirm. Are you sure you want to play now? That means you're going to lock in your scores. And I say, yes, I want to do that. But it's a problem because it's not time to roll the dice yet. It's not time to begin. So I say okay and nothing's changed. So you see why we have this problem? It's because we still have here seven minutes until we can even roll the dice. All right, so we're gonna have to wait for that. In the meantime, then let me just quickly review what we've seen. What we have here is a dice rolling area. When you see this, do not roll, that means there's really nothing you can do it's either waiting to begin to roll the dice or we haven't finished last week's game and last week's RPG is still going so there's nothing we can do. If I look over here I can see that I still have some points here 
those points were from the last RPG game. And I can't change those until a new dice rolling time comes. So nothing I can do there. You can also see that down here, the area is all darkened. Why? Because that previous game is already locked in. There's nothing I can do. And in fact, you can see the word freeze here, meaning that all your points that you've distributed are frozen. No change can occur now because it's already past the dice rolling time and it's on the game playing time. Okay, let me just go ahead and review then how the process works step by step for you because it can be a little bit confusing until you play the first time. So let's first of all keep in mind that the RPG we're going to play, we're going to play many of them, but the first one is going to be RPG 0. 0 means practice. So it's not going to count for any score, it's not going to count against you or for you, but it's really important that you come and play RPG 0. Why? Because you need to get some practice. It's really important to get the practice. Once you get practice, you're going to be very happy and you're going to do much better. If you don't get practice, your group's going to really have trouble the first time. That's RPG 1. So RPG 0, we're going to get a lot of practice. And we're going to come here and what is it we're going to do? First of all, we need to check the class schedule. So we need to see what's the time. What's the time for the dice roll? Time for the roll, right? Not just for playing the game, but for the roll because the Dice roll is the time we distribute our points. It's the time we find out if we're a buyer or a seller. And it's the time we begin to get the setup to play the game, which will go on for five to seven days, depending on the schedule. Okay, so we come over here to this sheet, to the dice sheet for each group. So you're going to go to your Google page, G for Google, right? And you're going to go to your dice page. Now, how did you get this link? You should have gotten this link in the email after you signed up for a group and after the class began. So by the time we get to RPG Zero, you should have a link. You want to remember to always keep your G pages, your Google pages secret, right? Do not hand those addresses out. So you don't want people to know what those are. You want to keep it secret. If another group finds out your page address they will be able to see all of your secret information and then that's going to be very hard to compete in the game so you come over to the dice page and then what do you do you check the time up top the countdown and the countdown is going to tell us when will the dice roll begin and when will the dice roll end now usually before you begin everything is going to be reset to zero so everything will be zero here we see an example from the last game, but you don't need to worry about that because it's all going to be reset to zero. And then we go ahead and we wait for that time. So now I'm going to wait. After you've played your RPG for the week, the next RPG, the scores will just stay there. Nothing will change and you can't change anything until an hour before the time to roll comes around. You can see here on the sheet, I've changed the times a little bit. You can see here we have an hour before beginning. When it's an hour before beginning, the system will automatically reset all of your numbers. So for example, your roll will be uh, zero. The number of rolls you have will be reset to five. We'll talk about that in a minute. All of your numbers from your previous game here will be set to zero and the product and the product details will be set to false meaning there's no information and product a or b will be undecided because you haven't decided what you're going to be selling or buying yet now these numbers down here will open up and turn green that means it's getting ready for you to use and you could go ahead and change these numbers but again you can't really do anything because if you press play now or if you press roll now what are you going to do? You're going to be told it's not time yet because we still have an hour before the game in this example. So I can go ahead and try. And it's going to send it to the server and it's going to say, are you sure? But then in the end, it's going to say, no, it's not time to do that yet. So we have a time problem, you see. So 
So there's no way I can really do anything until it's time to play. However, I just let you know, before the rolling time, before the dice roll time, one hour before, you can go ahead and take a look at your page, get ready, get your group members online. They don't all have to be in the same room with you, although it's very convenient. They can be on their mobile devices. They can even be in class. You can literally be in class and getting ready to play the RPG in my class, which is uh, pretty cool. Although I don't want you to get caught by your other teacher taking my class while you're in somebody else's class, so be careful. In any case, those are kind of the steps. We get ready, we come over, and we wait. And then once everything gets cleared, all the numbers will be reset. Everything will be cleared or reset for the game. And when does that happen? That happens just an hour before the roll time. So next, let's go ahead and look at how do we actually roll the dice to get ready to distribute our points for the RPG. Now here we see the game page, the dice page, just before we can roll. But once the time comes, that's all going to change and you're going to get a very different look. Let's go ahead and see what happens when the time has arrived. You see you get a lot more green on there, which means go ahead and do something. So here we can see that we've lost that whole area of saying don't do anything, don't roll. And now we have, you can roll now. You can also see that because everything's been reset to zero just before, an hour beforehand, so all our numbers for the game are zero. You can also see that down the bottom, our distribution of our numbers are all set to one with the maximum produce, a purchase, the max maximum product you can actually purchase is set to zero. That's for buyer only. Okay, let's go ahead and give it a try and we can see step by step how it works. We have five rolls left right now. And we are not a buyer or seller because we haven't rolled anything yet. So we're going to go ahead and give it a try. So our time is good. We have zero hours to wait. And we have two hours to finish this process. Let's go ahead and give it a try. So press roll. And remember, we're going to have this yellow area pops open here saying we need to type anything. So type anything means you can type any number, any letters, A, B, C, D. And you have to remember to press enter. If you don't press enter, then it's not going to work. Go ahead. I went ahead and entered. And it tells me that it's sending the information to the server. And now I'm finding out here that we have four rolls left. Why? We started with five. We just used up one. So now we have four. We're going to go ahead and say OK with that. And you can see the information now has changed. We do have four rolls left. And you can see we've gotten some points to spend, 22 points. Now the question becomes, are we OK with that? Do we think 22 is enough for this RPG we're going to play. If it's not enough, we have to roll again. But if we roll again, we're going to use up another roll and we only have four left. We cannot roll more than five. We have 20 points now and we're a seller. So we need to meet with our group members and think about this. Is this what we want? If it's okay, then we can go ahead and begin to distribute those 22 points. Now you see we've already got ones on here because they're minimum. You have some minimums. Don't forget this special case, which is the maximum purchase that's just for a buyer. Because we're a seller, we don't have to use any of these max points because that's max for purchase, buyer only. Keep that in mind, buyer only. So we could keep that at zero because we're a seller. If we were a buyer, we could not keep it at zero. It would have to be at least one. Let's go ahead and distribute some of our points. So for resistance, I'm going to go ahead and give three. And for flex points, I'm going to give two. And for delivery, I'm going to give three. And for units, I'm going to give three. Three, there we go. And for importance, I'm going to give it a four. And for quality, I'm going to go ahead and give it a three. And we can see now that I've spent some points, but I still have four points left, right? 
So I got I can go ahead and spend those. Now, I could go ahead and not spend them, but that would be a waste. I don't want to waste them. I don't want to lose them. Now, later, you're going to find out that you can actually give flex points away. You can actually give flex points to other groups. But that's not now. That's a little bit later once you begin to play the game. So for now, our points are four more. Let's go ahead and spend them. So let's go ahead and increase our resistance up to four. And let's go ahead and we're a seller. So I'm thinking, you know, I want to have fast delivery for my customers. Cause some customers are going to want fast delivery. So increase that. And also our buyers are going to want to have good quality. So let me see if I can get better quality, right? So I've gone ahead and I've spent all my points except one. So I'm going to go back and say I'm going to get one more flex point here. And there you go. I have now spent all of my points. Now what if I spend more than I have? If I go ahead and try to spend one more point, I'm going to get a warning. And it's going to tell me that you cannot spend more than your maximum. I have 22 points to spend but I've gone ahead and spent 23. Thus, we have a negative number there. See that one right there? Negative. So I need to undo that. If I go ahead and try to lock in those points now, it's not going to work. So if I think, say, oh, I'm, I'm good. I want to keep this the way it is. I could go ahead and push that play now, which means I'm ready to play. I'm not going to change any more of the points. I'm done. I'm ready to play the RPG. Well, I need to, again, type in anything here, JJJ, and I press enter, and it's going to say sending information to server, which is good, but then it's going to say, are you sure? Are you really sure you want to lock in your points now? Confirm. Yes or no? If I say no, then I can still make changes, so I could go ahead and make some changes. Maybe I'm going to change this flex to be three, and my points are okay, and then it's going to go ahead and it's going to try to I think I touched something by accident there. I pressed enter, but it's going to go ahead and try to send it to the server. And I say, okay, but I still, I'm not sure I want to do that. I still want to make changes. So I say no again. That's okay. Let me go ahead and go over. So I'm going to go up here and five. And once again, I'm over on spending my points. Well, if I press the enter. I should ask me to confirm, but I think I pressed enter. Sometimes you press enter, it goes ahead and does it anyway. And I'm going to say, I want to send it in. And yes, I confirm. I'm ready. I want to play now. Uh, but there's a problem, you see. The problem is that I haven't chosen product A or B. Oh, okay. Where's that at? That's right over here. Undecided product, A product, or B product. Now, not every game has two products. Some RPGs just have one product, and that's product A. Some RPGs have product A and product B you need to decide which one you're going to use. If it's just A, then obviously you only choose A. If you choose B, that wouldn't work out too good. I'm choosing A here. I could go ahead and change it to B, and you can see the name is going to say false. Why? Because this RPG only has one product, and that's product A. I'm going to go ahead and choose A, and it tells me the product's name is Sports Carry Duffel Bag. Okay, so I'm good. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and try to play the game again. I'm going to press this Play Now button. Again, I'm going to have to type something in here. So I'm going to say A, B, C, Enter. And it's going to head send it to the server, just like before. And now I'm getting this question. Are you sure? Because... After we do this, we can't change any of the numbers for the whole RPG. Now, next week, a week or two later, when we have the RPG number two and RPG number three, we can change those, of course, when we have the dice rolling time. But this is locking it in for this one RPG. I'm going to say, yes, I want to lock it in. But there's a problem. What's the problem? It's a points problem. What's the points problem? Well, we spent too many points. We're negative one. So that's not going to let us continue. So let's go ahead and fix our point problem here and spend just the right number of points, zero. Now I'm going to go ahead and push the play now button. I need to type anything. I'm going to do A, B, C, D, E, F and press enter. Send information to server. 
Are you sure you want to lock in your points? Yes, I'm sure. And here we go. You can see that there's some changes on the screen. The biggest changes is are <laughs> you now have points up here. Those are the points you're going to play the game with. Your, your resistance, your flex, your delivery, importance, buyer, seller, all of this is fixed. Not going to change anymore. I'm going to be a seller and I'm going to have this situation for my negotiation and then I'm going to have the product locked in here. And there's absolutely nothing I can do to change that now. I must play now. The time to roll has not changed yet. We still have time to roll the dice, you see. The problem is we've already locked everything in. Thus, everything here is black. You don't see any more options. Now, you can press those numbers there, but you're not going to be able to change your numbers up top here, and that's what matters. Those are the things you're going to play the game with. I could go ahead and try to roll the dice if I wanted to, so let me try that again. I'm going to try to roll the dice, and it needs to confirm that I'm a person, so I type ABC, enter, and it sends it to the server, but then it says there's a problem. What's the problem? You've already locked your values. We've already decided to play the game. We can't change the numbers now. What if I go ahead and I try to push play now again? So I push play now. Again, I need to confirm. I'm a person here, A, B, C, D, E, press enter. Sends it to the server. I confirm, yes, I want to lock in my score. Yes, lock it in. But there's a problem, and that is we've already locked in our score. We cannot change it now, you see? So once you lock in, you can't change again. You need to wait until the next RPG to make those changes. But let's go ahead and look at this all again. And this time, let's try to do a few more rolls to see how that works. So we're back to our dice sheet. And what can we see? In this example, we still cannot play because we cannot begin our roll because it's still an hour left. But remember, an hour beforehand, everything's going to be reset. So what do we have here? We have all of our scores are reset to zero. We have our points are reset to zero. And everything down here that we can choose is reset to its lowest number, which is one or zero. And of course, we're being told we cannot roll yet because it's not time. When the time arrives, of course, the screen's going to change. And it's going to tell us we can go ahead and roll now. So let's go ahead and do the same thing we just did, but try a few more rolls. So we come over and we're going to press that button, roll now. Okay, roll now. We need to confirm that we're not a robot. Testing. Press enter. And you can see we are sending the information to the server as always. And we now have four rolls left. We see that our points to distribute are 23. We have four rolls left, and we're going to be a buyer. Okay, maybe we think 23 is not good, and maybe we don't want to be a buyer this time. So we talk with our group. We talk with our group members, and this is really key. Discussion with your group members, because if you do something that your group members don't agree with, how are you going to be able to have a good negotiation where you have a good plan and you work together? It's not going to work. But anyway, let's say 23, eh, I don't like that, and I don't like being a buyer. So I'm going to change that. What do I do? I can roll again. So we go ahead and type in and press Enter. The information is sent to the server. And now we have three rolls left. You can see this time we have 16 points. And now we have three le rolls left and we're a seller. Well, that's a big difference, isn't it? We went all the way down to 16 points. You know, you could have 25 points. You might have 30 points. In the next roll, you could go all the way down to 10 points. So every time you roll, you're taking a very big risk. The risk is that you're going to get fewer points. It's going to go down. If that goes down... I'm betting you a lot of money that you're not going to be very happy with going down. 
because those points are key to your negotiation position, aren't they? Of course, buyer and seller is important depending on your strategy and what you've done before and the relationships you've created with other groups who are also possibly buyers or sellers. But if you keep changing just to change buyer and seller, you've got this risk. Your points may go down so far, it's going to make your position untenable. Well, now we've got three roles left and everybody in my group is very angry. Hey, 16 is not enough for us to play this game successfully. What are we going to do? Say, well, we're going to roll again. Okay, well, we can do that. So let's go ahead and give it a try. So I'm going to press the button, roll again. Remember, I've got to type something here. Z, 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 Y, 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 X, X, X. Okay, press enter. The information is being sent to the server. And now we're told we have two rolls left. The maximum of two rolls left. So I say, okay. And look what I got. I got lucky. I got 30 points. So that was a pretty good idea after all. The first roll was medium. The second roll was low. And the third roll is high. So I got lucky. I'm going to be a buyer this time. So I need to think. I need to talk to my group members. Is this okay? Because now if it's okay, what can we do? We can begin to distribute the points. What if I don't like that? What if I want to go even higher or I want to try for more or I don't like being a buyer? Then, of course, we can roll again. We roll again. Again, we go ahead and ABC type something and enter. And now we have action sent to server and one roll left. And we got 20 points. So we just went down 10 points and we're a buyer. What if I don't like that? Well, I can try to roll again. I roll again and I type something random there. Enter. Information sent to server and we have zero rolls left. Zero. And now we have 25. I cannot roll anymore. If I try to roll more, what will happen? Sent to server. And we have a game problem, and that is you have used up all of your rolls. So if you keep rolling, you're going to be stuck with the last one. The last one is your fifth roll. You have a maximum of five. So if I did this, I must now distribute 25 points. Of course, 30 points was better, but I thought I might get even better than that. So I went ahead and gave it a try. Okay, so that's kind of the way we distribute our points. We roll the dice and we get the buyer and seller fixed. Remember, what do we need to do next? We need to go ahead and put those points into their correct positions. We need to make sure we choose the product we want. And then when we have everything fixed just the way we like it, then we go ahead and push play now. And that will lock in our scores up here. And we must do all of that when we must do it before before time runs out and that time is up here time until end of the roll to see our starting position we're going to need to look at the tab of buyer or the tab of seller so of course if we go over to buyer you can see right away there's a problem because in the product price area there's a message that says not buyer that's because we just rolled the dice we got a negative one came up and that means we're a seller so we cannot use this tab of buyer however when we click on seller we do see the numbers have come through now these numbers are the base price the base units and your flex points. Where does the base price come from? Remember that will be the product that everyone is buying and selling on that day. I sent it to you in a PDF before 9 a.m. So everyone in your group should have received a PDF that explains the product, its features, its price, and the number of units. So that's fixed for everyone. But then you rolled the dice, remember? And when you rolled the dice, that changes things. So for example, 
the base price is 1,500, I think in this case it's US dollars. And we went ahead and we rolled a five just a moment ago. And that five means that the base price will change to be 0 0.92 of that base. So now the resistance becomes 1,380. I'm a seller. This means that when I sell this product, I must sell this product for 1,380 or more. I cannot sell it for less. If I sell it for less, that's going to be a problem. Now, remember, the game has no rules and you can make many deals with many groups. So when I say resistance and when I say you cannot sell for less, what do I really mean? I, I mean it's up to you to do what you want. You could sell for less. You could. However, of course, that was going to hurt your score in the end, as we'll see when we get to the end of this page. The same is true as of your base units. So we began with everybody has to sell, in this case, 15,000 units or buy 15,000 units. You rolled the dice and you rolled a 4. A 4 is 1 times 1.04. And that means your mod units is 15,600. That means you will be able to produce, your factory can produce 15,600 units of this product. Your flex points is 1, and that's not so high. The highest could have been 6. We did not get 6, so hmm, not such good luck there. And then the importance is 1, small potatoes. Why is why is it small potatoes? Because that's the least important. So here is the information we need to begin thinking about how are we going to make a plan and what are we going to set for our goals for this negotiation? Because we can see clearly the importance of this is one, which means very small, small potatoes. So even if we do a really good job negotiating, this is not going to be an important negotiation. That doesn't mean we shouldn't try, but it may be a chance for us to be more flexible and take more risk or to find a cooperation with other groups because we don't have a lot to lose. Next, we see the summary of our score. and This is really useful just to quickly see what are my important numbers. So my sell minimum is 15,600 units. My minimum price is 1,380. My maximum quality is low, and my maximum delivery is fast. Now, those numbers appear down here on the left side, quality and delivery. And you can see you rolled the dice of 1, and you rolled the dice of 5, and the picture shows the green line, which is what you rolled. So the quality is low. Now, what does that mean? That means I'm a seller, and I produce low quality. Can I produce average quality? Can I produce high quality? It's possible, but it will cost me more. So my most efficient quality for my factory, for my supply channel, is low. My delivery, however, is fast. What does that mean? Can I deliver average speed? Can I deliver slow? I could, and when I deliver slow, I save money. So I remember saving money is just like making money, right? So I save money, I make more money but I can deliver fast without spending more money. So that's an advantage I have. So you can see the picture is very mixed. I have the, uh, this amount I need to try to sell. I have a resistance price and I have quality, which is low, which is not great, but I also have fast delivery, which is very good. And finally, I know that my negotiation situation is not so important. Okay, so that gets us um, pretty far so far. We now understand our beginning position. From our beginning position, we're then going to begin to negotiate with other groups. And that's what we're going to look at now, how to make a deal. Okay, when you're ready to make a deal, we have two links on your RPG score sheet. One link is to the deal report and another link is to the deal cancel report. So you can click either one of these. Let's go ahead and click one now. So I'm going to go ahead and click the deal report link. 
and that will open up a form again on Google and this is the details of the deal I'm going to make let's go ahead and make a deal and see how it works I'm going to choose first what RPG are we in how do you know which RPG I forget go back to your RPG sheet and right there you can see RPG 0 so any information you need you should be able to come back to your game sheet and see the information okay so far so good my group number is 1 I'm pretending to be group 1 I need a password okay where do I get a password at every group you're gonna see your password again on your RPG sheet and so here is my password I take that password and I go ahead and copy it in here now you want to be careful you don't want the other side to see your password so if you take a screenshot or if you capture this screen maybe you want to do it without the password there or maybe you want to uh, cover that over with a graphic in fact you could do something like just take a screenshot right there something like that okay next I need to have a deal ID how do I do a deal ID well a deal ID I go ahead and click this other page and it's going to give me a number it takes a moment You see that number it's always changing because every deal needs to have a unique ID or timestamp so I just go ahead and click that button now I have a number I go ahead and I put that number into this box whoops did the wrong thing I need to paste it in but this number is not just for me this is also for the group I'm going to make a deal with so let's say I'm making a deal with group number two my counterpart is group number two I'm talking to group number two right now on Facebook or on uh, Skype or maybe face to face or maybe on my phone I need to give them this number the deal ID our two groups must have the exact same deal ID if we don't have the same deal ID the ID deal will not succeed it will fail so I'm gonna make a deal with group number two that's the next thing I choose and am I a seller or a buyer in this case I am a seller and how many units am I buying let's say I want to buy 500 units you do not have to buy everything from one group you can divide up and buy from other groups or sell to other groups in this case I'm a seller I got that wrong I'm a seller so I'm gonna sell 500 units to group 2 and I am buying or selling at this price so let me go ahead and just make up a price here our resistance price is 1380 so I'm gonna go ahead and say I got a uh, 1400 so I sold it for more than which is my goal and I'm going to go ahead and sell at a certain quality so remember my quality situation my quality is low which is a bit of a problem right but let's say I made a deal and I could make the deal for two which is medium so I'm going to probably lose something on that however on the delivery speed remember my delivery speed was fast so I'm going to now make this deal maybe I was able to deliver it to them at the average speed of course we had to negotiate right we both agree group 2 and group 1 agree to this they don't know my secrets and I don't know their secrets and then when you're done you go ahead and you send in this form okay and that is one deal done however you need to remember that the group you made a deal with they also need to turn in their deal information if they do not turn in their information then things are not going to match anyway let's come back now and look at our RPG game sheet and no information changes up at the top but what we do see here is we do have a deals come through here's the deal ID number so we always can see the ID number so if you need to give that number again to your group to your counterpart you can go ahead and do that I made a deal with group number two 
What was the price? Fourteen hundred. Remember, what was the quantity? The quantity is five hundred. And we just saw some pop-up notes there. You can see some notes here. Under resistance, you cannot sell for a price under your resistance. I think the system may warn you. Um, I'd have to check if the system actually stops you. Um, I have to check about that. Um, yeah, this thing is so complicated sometimes I forget how I uh, arranged it. But anyway, we'll give it a try in a second. So this is our weighted average price because we have 500 units at a price of 1400 So then we go ahead and times that out for 700 here. 700,000, I mean, 700,000. And of course, in the end, what we do is we divide the total by the um, number of units and we get the 1400 we only have one deal so far so the price was 1400 so the weighted average is 1400 of course so that just gives us a quick summary next we come down to this bigger box here and we can see that we have a deal this number with group number two quality two delivery two and units 500 now remember the quality we sold for two which is the a level higher than what we actually are able to because when we look up here remember our quality is low not average but we sold it for average so what does that mean that means that we have a quality gap of minus one what does that mean well if you have a gap here you need to somehow make up for that gap and how do you make up for that gap you're going to have to use a flex point. Now, the problem here is when we began this game, we only had one flex point. That's not much flexibility in the system for us. However, in this case, we only need one, so we go ahead and we use one. On the delivery, remember, our advantage is we have the ability to deliver fast, but we made a deal to delivery, deliv make a delivery at average speed. So that means that we make a flex point because there's a gap. When there's a gap, it'll be a negative gap or a positive gap. And a positive gap, you make, you add, you get flex points. And for a negative gap, you lose, you spend, uh, you go down that many points so what's interesting here is our total flex point gain or loss is zero because of course one plus negative one is zero and that means we still have one flex point left and how many have we totally spent we have spent zero so far because we made one and we spent one so the total is zero okay so far so good Now, we can also see down here that we have begun to get a score because we now have some numbers in the system. So let's go ahead and look over this. We have a weighted average price here and we have our resistance. We subtract those and the difference is 20. Because we're a seller, of course, we would like to sell for more. So now we're doing well. That's good. We divide that by our resistance to end up with a fraction, and that's a 0 0.01. And then we times that by 100 to get back to a, a above a decimal, so 1.45. Now, what does this mean? It doesn't really mean anything. It means some groups could have more, some groups could have less. If I had sold the price to be lower than, than 1400 maybe I sold it just to be 1380 just my resistance, then right now my score would be zero so far. Uh, up to here would be zero because I didn't <laughs> didn't do anything above my resistance plus flex points so now we're at 2.45 and then we're gonna times importance so you can see importance is a big one if we had a two importance we would now be right over over about five but instead we only have one importance so we're gonna stay at 2.45 and then times inventory sold. So how much of the inventory did I sell? Well, actually, I only sold a little bit because I only uh, put out there 
Uh, how many was it? 500 units, I think. I'll look up here. 500 units. That's not many compared to my total. It's just 3% of the total. And then it comes out to have an, a score. So I think the score gets rounded up. No decimals. So one. Well, one seems like a small number, but hey, we've only just begun. We only made one deal. Now, one thing to pay attention to is you do have a limited number of deals you can make. So let me see. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven spaces for deals. So that's a little bit limited. You need to pay attention to that. Now, we are a seller, so we do have one more special case for a seller. So let's go ahead and look at some of the special rules now for the seller. If you're a seller, you have a production situation, right? How much can your factory produce? And what we did, remember, was we took the beginning number, which were the base units, and we had a mod unit. So our factory is able to produce 15,600 units in this example. Production maximum. That means what's the maximum you can produce? Okay, the maximum is equal to the mod units. Where's the mod units? Right up here. 15,600. 15,600. Let me zoom in a little bit, get a better picture of that, right? There we go. What if you want to produce more? Let's say you find a buyer, and the buyer is giving you a really good deal. You have a great opportunity, or maybe you want to help a buyer because you have a good relationship or whatever. So you want to produce more. So you want to overproduce. Can you overproduce? Well, no, you cannot unless you spend something. And what do you spend? You spend flex points. So how does this work? For every 10% over your maximum production, which is your mod units, you must spend a flex point. So one flex point to increase production 10%. This will be calculated automatically down in this area here when you input your deal sheet. So for example, we can see here in this area overproduction price. So if you overproduce, it will automatically calculate here and remove a flex point for every 10% you go over. You have a maximum of 7 deals and one flex point for every 10% increase. Now, what does the 10% mean? It means any number between 0 and 10%. So if you overproduce 11%, how much will that cost you? Two flex points because you've gone over 20%, basically. They come in these big chunks. So flex points are kind of set, and you need to pay attention to that. Here's a short summary just to remind you very quickly of how the deals work and how you benefit or uh, lose something, how you gain or lose. Going lower gains flex points. Going higher spends flex points, in this case because we're the seller. So going lower, in this case like for example lower price, uh, lower speed, or here higher, higher speed, lower speed, these kinds of things. Canceling a deal will have a cost if both sides do not agree. So we can cancel the deal. Well, how can we cancel? Well, we come right back up to the top and we push the cancel button here and we're going to get another form to cancel the deal. But before we do that, let's look at our counterpart because we've just looked at the group number one example and that example was a seller. Let's now jump over to the counterpart, I think right here, and this is group number two. So group number two, we're going to scan down here, and we can see group number two is a buyer. Why? Because if they go to the seller page, what do they get? Not seller. This cannot use the seller page. They're a buyer. Okay, they have the same information that the seller has. Same. But what's different? This is different. The resistance is different because it went through the dice roll for them. 
the mod units is different because it went through the dice roll for them also. The importance could be different. In this case, by coincidence, it's the same. The flex points could be different. In this case, they have two flex points, right? Again, for the buyer, same thing. They can come over here and very quickly see their maximum situation. Now, let's go ahead and complete the deal we just made with the group number one. Group number two, who's the counterpart, must also make the same deal. So they're going to go ahead and open up a deal sheet. Now I'm going to go ahead and fill in the deal sheet for the buyer. Okay, I've completed that and let me just go over real fast for you. So we're making the deal now for the buyer. And this is RPG zero, group number two. I am now group number two. My password, where do I get the password? Remember the password is back on your RPG sheet. I have a deal ID. Where did the deal ID come from? Remember, we both use the same group ID. The buyer and the seller use the same ID. Where did we get it? From this page here where we click and get a number, a timestamp. Who am I making a deal with? I'm making a deal with group number one. I am a buyer because group number one is a seller. And how many am I buying? 500 units. And what's the price I'm buying for? It's 1,400. What's the quality I'm buying? Two. And what's the delivery speed I'm buying? Two. These numbers must be exactly the same for the buyer and the seller. And we just do this one time, each group for one deal. So this means that every deal needs two of these forms, one from the buyer, one from the seller. I submit. So now we can check the results by looking on group number one on their RPG sheet. And we can come down and we can see that this is the deal we sent. And here we see the, de the details of the deal. But we also can see over on the right side this little note here. Deal reports match deals report match. That means that when the seller sent their one report and the buyer sent their one report, the numbers were the same. If those numbers do not match, that means that one of the buyer or seller team did not correctly put in the information and that's a way to try to cheat. If that happens, of course, things won't work out exactly right. So in this case, let's say that um, I'm still group number one here and I put in my information like this, but group number two, instead of putting in the information of quality two, they went ahead and said, hey, I think we can just get high quality and cheat this little game. And so I'm going to change that to be quality of three. Okay, so I've changed it in the database so that group number two tried to cheat by buying quality three instead of quality two. And in that case, we're going to have a little bit of a problem when we refresh this page, I think. Yes, there we go. You can see now deal reports mismatch. Now, you do have to be a little bit patient sometimes. This is Google Docs. If your internet connection is slow, um, it could be slow. Also, the calculation can be quite complicated. Sometimes up here in the top area, you'll see a little bar of progress. When you see that bar, that means you're waiting for the data to come through from the database over the internet. So just keep an eye open for that. There you go. There's the bar. You see the bar? That's the updating bar. When you see that updating bar, that means data is coming through. Be patient. Don't go crazy. All right. So what we have here again is I'm group number one. I went ahead. I made a deal. I thought I put the information in correctly, but look what happened. Deal report mismatch. So what am I going to do now? Well, this means either the buyer or the seller put something in wrong. They could have put in the wrong deal ID. They could have put in the wrong quality. They could have put in the wrong quantity. They could have put in the wrong delivery time, or they could just be trying to cheat. In any case, that deal is not going to count. 
So you're going to have to do something to fix that. Now, if you contact the other group and you can ask them what happened and they may deny that they did something wrong, you could go ahead and cancel the deal. We're going to look at canceling the deal in a moment. Or you could talk to the other group and maybe you decide, oh, yes, I did something wrong. I put in the wrong deal ID or I put in something wrong. If that's the case, then you can send an email to the teaching assistant email and be very clear. Who are you? What RPG game are you talking about? And what is the exact situation for what group? What do you need to change? This is one reason it's important to take a screenshot of your deal form and also your cancel form if you make a cancel. Because when you make your deal, if you type something wrong, how will you know it was wrong unless you have a screen capture of it? Also, if you typed it correctly and you want to show the other side, your counterpart, hey, I did everything right, it must be something you did wrong, you again need a screen capture. So it would be really good to keep a screen capture on your own of the deal report, and that way you can prove later what happened. In any case, if you talk to the other group, in, the, in this example, group one, group two, and we say, oh, I must have typed something wrong, my bad, I did something wrong, you can email TA Assistant, be very clear, what do you want me to change, and I'll go ahead and change that inside the database to match. Now, once I make the change, for example, maybe in this case, group two did not choose high quality on purpose. They just made a mistake. They thought they could do that. I go into the database. I can change that. And once I've changed that, the data will come through to your spreadsheet or next time you refresh, it'll come through and you'll be able to see that the deals actually match after I made that change you requested. So if you make a mistake, that's okay. What about the chance that nobody made a mistake, everything they wrote was correct, but I don't want that deal anymore, or the other side keeps saying they did not make a mistake, even though I think they did make a mistake. So how can we fix that problem? That problem is going to take a deal cancel form. There it goes. It came through. Deal reports match. So the deal report matches because I changed in the database. Let's say that the other side, I just don't agree with them or they will not admit they did something wrong or maybe they did everything right and I did everything right, but I still want to cancel the deal. Why? Because I found a better deal. So what can we do? Let's try the cancel form. So the deal report is here and this is the cancel deal report and how does that work well it's very similar what round are we in round zero what group number am i i'm group zero what's my password i have to get my password and remember your password is going to be on your rpg page put in my password what id do i want to cancel how do i know the id of the deal remember the deal id is listed here the deal id is also listed here so I go ahead and copy that. And now I go ahead and put that in here. because I'm going to cancel this deal. Who did I make a deal with? I made it with group number two. And in this case, group number one is a seller. And then I can write a little reason here. Now you don't have to write a reason, but you can if you want to. We found a better deal. There's nothing to stop you from doing that. However, there's something you need to remember, and that's right up here at the top of the form. It might cost you money, or it might cost you something, to cancel the deal. Let's look at some examples. Three possibilities. A. Both parties cancel. If buyer and seller both agree to cancel, they both fill out a cancel form. That means the buyer fills out a form and the seller fills out a form. Remember, the deal ID must be the same. So again, it's the same as before. If you both agree, then group one fills out one cancel and group two fills out one cancel. That's example A, possibility A. What about B? 
you cancel, but the counterpart does not cancel. So that means I cancel, but the side I made a deal with, they don't want to cancel. So what happens? It's going to cost me. How much will it cost? It will cost one half flex point for every hundred units of the deal. In this case, we had 500 units for this deal. So that would be 500 times 0.5 flex points, 2.5 flex points. C, you could not cancel. Yeah, you did not cancel, but your counterpart cancels. That'll cost you nothing. So if you did not cancel, but the other side canceled, you pay nothing, but the deal is still canceled. All right, so I could send this in. And again here, I'm acting as group number one, right? Group number one right there. So I'm going to go ahead and send it in. We can see what happens. Send it in. And I can go back to my negotiation page. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. Again, remember, especially if you're using another browser, updates can take time. Okay, so let's continue looking at group one. I just canceled the deal and we can see here in this average weighted price area, the deal I canceled has a line through it. That means it was canceled. I can also come down to the details of the report and you can again see a line through there, canceled. You can also see that the deal reports match. That was the original matching. But then there's another message here, seller canceled deal. Because I'm group one, in this example, I'm a seller. I canceled the deal. So seller canceled deal. Password pass, that means the cancel password worked. So you cannot cheat and cancel another group's deal. That would be cheating. You need a password. So be careful. Keep your password secret. And then finally here, you can see there is a price. There's a cancellation fee. Why is there a cancellation fee? Because only one side canceled. The seller canceled. The buyer did not cancel. So there is a 2.5 fee. Now, maybe I'm waiting for the buyer to cancel. So this money, this price would go away. But if they don't cancel, I'm going to have to pay that price. Now let's look at the other side of this deal. This would be the buyer, group number two. And we can come down and again, here's their information, but now you can see it's canceled. So the weighted average that's canceled there. And you can see down here, we have a canceled deal. Password pass, that was, it was approved. The deals report, the deal reports match. But then what happened? The seller canceled the deal. The seller canceled the deal. So any points I made from that deal, I don't make any more. If I made a good deal and I had gained some flex points, those flex points would now be not gained. I don't lose anything though because I'm not the one that canceled the deal. Okay, now we come back to group one here. Group one, they canceled the deal. And you can see up here, little gray area, 2.5 is the price for canceling that deal. CXL is short for cancel. Now let's take a look at one more special option, which is you can gift points, you specifically your flex points to other groups. So if we look up at the top here where we had the cancel button, or link, we now also have a send flex points link. So the good thing about this is you could actually be helping another group because you've partnered with them.
All right, we're going to come right up to the flex point link here and you can see a link pops up. I go ahead and click on that just like the cancel deal and now we can send flex points. You're going to need to specify what RPG we're in. So maybe we're in number six and you're going to have to specify what your group is and you're going to need your password. So you need to type that password here. Remember the password is on your game page at the top left. Remember, I'll work at number four here, group number 20, and here's my password right there. Okay, so this is gonna be group number 20, and we're in RPG number four. Okay, there we go. And I'm gonna get my password, so I go back to my game page, grab my password for the group, put that in there. So you see, all that information, where do you get it from? You get it right from the top of your game page, right up here, everything you need. Then you're gonna specify who you're sending the points to, so that's a group number. And you better be sure you get the group right. You don't wanna send it to the wrong group by accident. And then here you can specify how many flex points it is, and here's a little bit of a note. So let me go ahead and see if I can fill this out. I'm going to send it maybe to group number one. And let's go ahead and send one flex point. And I can make a note. Okay, maybe I'll make a little note about who it's coming from so they know. I mean, they should know, but this will help make things very clear. We're all ready. I'm going to go ahead and submit that. You can now see that we have a little entry here on the box that says flex, send, and receive. There it is. Flex, send, and receive. Flex points sent and receive. So we've got one minus because I sent it. It's to and from, and the note is here. Now, um, I don't actually play, I'm not playing a game right now. If I was actually playing, it would also show group one is the one I sent it to. Right now, it's not send, showing that because I'm not actually playing a game. But normally, it would show who it's from and who it's to. And the note I included is also here. So that's a way to send flex points. Okay, so I think that gives you a nice introduction to how to play the RPG game. The best thing is give it a try. And if you have questions, talk with your group colleagues and then send an email to the negotiation TA email and the TA will help you. And if they can't help you, then they'll let me know and I can help you. Good luck with your negotiation RPGs.